Hello and welcome and in this video I want to cover the last two plots that were presented in the paper Algorithm for Automating the Selection of a Temperature Dependent Change Point Models which this is either part five or six of that series. So I have a copy of that plot here. If I scroll down a little bit I can't see it all within my screen at the moment. But what you'll see here is we have six plots and therefore six different building sector types. And those sector types are outpatient hospital, medium office building, secondary school, large office building, warehouse, and large hotel. And what's being plotted is electricity use, so average daily electricity use like we've been looking at, and temperature as the x-axis independent variable. Now this data comes from the DOE, Department of Energy, they have these reference Energy Plus models. Energy Plus. And these are very useful. And they also have, there's also 16 climates, United States climates, that go with it. And so what you're able to do is you can take these simulation models, which they're, they're coming from, they're, they're being built off of something called CBEX. Don't ask me to repeat. Commercial Building Something Energy Consumption Survey, where this is a, a big survey of, of buildings in the United States, and we're trying to get an idea of how the building stock in the United States currently is operating in this survey happens once every couple of years and it's very useful because it allows us to build up something that says okay if you here is a typical outpatient hospital profile energy profile and now we can model with it if we can do simulation with it we can do lots of interesting things like what this paper did so I think this outpatient hospital shows my point very very clearly so you see there's four different data point styles. You have a red circle, a blue square, green diamond, and a purple triangle. And they relate to the climates Miami, Seattle, Chicago, Fairbanks. So hot and humid to very cold, uh, mild and humid to mild and, well, it's still probably considered humid because of Lake Michigan being around, but a little less rain perhaps than Seattle. Now, when you plot that energy use, you take the same exact building. So this is the same simulation model. All you're changing is the climate that goes along with it. You notice that the pattern you'll get when you plot out the monthly data, or what we call this is the, the energy signature, because it's a, a plot against outside air temperature. This is remember this is electricity, electricity use, electricity use per day really. That though it's the same building, you you see really the whole profile of how this building operates in every temperature when you combine all of the different climate zones together. And you can see it it really does have a five parameter shape here where we're using electricity for cooling and for heating. But if you look at an individual climate zone, so for Miami, you never see this flattening out section. If you are in Chicago, you actually get the full profile. If you're in Seattle, you never see this up, this up portion. And the same thing for Fairbanks. And so what you get is you had the, the validator algorithm found a 2P model under one circumstance, a 5P, and it also found two 3P cooling model shapes, where it has a slope here and a flat section here. And so this is a proof in point is th in that if you don't have the data that that spans a wide enough temperature range, you you really cannot predict, you can't extrapolate to how that building is going to operate. If you are just given this section, you can't necessarily judge and say, oh yeah, this is going to just continue on. Oh yeah, I know it's going to flatten out or it's going to, it's going to slope up. You, you, extrapolating is very dangerous. 
and that's why we have certain tests that this algorithm uses to to protect ourselves from fitting models like that and you could see this in the other cases so these this case here they all have four parameter models but if you look this slope is very different from this purple slope even though they're both 4p models and this is both the lower temperature slope this is why you also can't necessarily gather certain building characteristics from these slopes this is the same building exactly the same building so it should have the same any building characteristics uh, u values and efficiencies should all be the same but if you're trying to extrapolate that out or calculate that out from these slopes that's also fairly dubious but the main point of this plot was to show that look out the uh, validator algorithm found reasonable models models that you could justify for all of these different climate zones so we had six we had six buildings if I scroll down a little bit here's a warehouse and a large hotel we had six buildings and we had four climate zones each so this is 24 and then we also did the same thing for natural gas as the as the dependent variable instead of electricity so this was how we tested and proved that the algorithm worked to how we how how we wanted to to do how well we wanted it to do and that has proven to be very useful for us here at the energy systems lab and so if you're doing these types of models these are relatively straightforward not complex these aren't artificial intelligence techniques anybody can program this up I advise you to think about using something like this to take out the arbitrariness arbitrariness of selecting these different shapes and give it some consistency and whether you use this or you come up with your own that's up to you but I hope that this series has given you an inside look as to what this paper was about and why it's important and hopefully give you a little better understanding so thanks for watching see you in the next videos